Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome back to not quite Axis and Allies. I have the AAA client open here and we're going to jump right in. This time we're going to play as the Axis against Hard Allies. I had a lot of fun playing the Allies last time. Let's see if we can crush it as the uh, Axis forces this time. Now the reason I started here instead of already in the game is because the second we load in, the Russians are going to start their turn. And I'm basically going to let that play out because it's going to happen very quickly. And then I'll kind of reintroduce the game and we'll jump right into playing out our turn. So basically you got to conquer the world. It's World War II. Um, we are playing as Germany in 1942, I think. And we're under attack right now. Oh, god dang it. Um, you know what? I was going to turn on this the thing called low luck because I think the game is more fun with low luck but maybe this is an interesting opportunity to play with luck on where you can do everything right but if you roll poorly or good or what have you uh, you know and this is a great a, a example of that right they attacked me with so many units and you can see how they break it down all of this infantry here gets to roll a die and on any rolls of one or lower, infantry hits. And then any infantry and artillery pairs each get to roll on twos. Uh, and then they, they didn't roll any of those. And then the tanks hit on threes or less. They rolled extremely high, so they only hit me twice and killed two of my people. When defending... Oh my god, it, it just jumped right through before I had a chance to def talk about the defending. When defending you have many more opportunities to um, how do you say English in the morning English all through the night you have way more opportunities in this luck game to miss and swing the game one way or the other but when you're defending your infantry defends on a two, but they only attack on a one. Every other unit basically is the same, except for fighters. But we'll uh, we'll jump right into it. So the, your turn starts with the production phase, where you're going to choose what you want to build. As the Axis, Germany, I, you really need a lot of infantry on the board, so I kind of max that out. And I like to have some air force, because the Luftwaffe is quite powerful. Sometimes tanks can be good for pushing on Russia and actually trying to hold, but for now... We're happy to get a really powerful air force. The Russians have t like 10 ground units here. So almost anything that we leave in any of these spaces will get demolished by those ground forces. So that's one of the things that we need to, to talk about or think about. Hmm... I'm not sure what I want to attack. They didn't really attack deep into our territory. We could attack... The way it works is we're sending units into territories and we can send planes. The planes will leave afterwards. They'll have a chance to roll and kill the enemy. Hopefully we hit them between all of these rolls. Um, but who knows? Maybe we miss and don't kill them, what have you. I'm really afraid of this stack because I don't want to leave anything beside it that it could just shove all into. I'd rather consolidate my troops. What will I use my planes and stuff for instead? Well, I'm going to go for Anglo-Egypt. So I'm going to load up a convoy, move my battleship, and this is really a pivotal battle for us. We need to win it to screw over... Uh, the Allies, or they'll be able to bring their whole fleet into the Mediterranean. You need to own both Anglo-Egypt and Transjordan to make this work. So here we have a bunch of things, but it's not got quite enough. So we can send a plane from the Ukraine, a plane from the Balkans, and a bomber to really give us the power that we need to punch through that. The Air Force for us is so powerful because it's so flexible. Uh, we have a transport in this sea zone, which we'll use to reinforce the front lines a little bit quicker. And we'll bring up our tanks. And we're going to stack basically everything for this first round, except for a couple token infantries and stuff, in Eastern Europe. Because Eastern Europe is a province that can attack all of these locations. 
Uh, except we'll, we'll move these guys into the Balkans just because of logistically where they are. These boats can carry up to two things, an infantry and anything else. We opted to get two infantry because the tanks can move two spaces, so we did that. Uh, we also have a plane here in Western Europe. What I want to do is attack this ship. It's not a guaranteed battle as it stands. Basically, we get a roll of a three and a roll of a two against his roll of a three. But if that ship survives, he could counterattack and try and blow up my battleship with it and some bombers and uh, more planes and ships from over here. So I think this is a good opening move for Germany. We have a huge army in Eastern Europe, and from here we should be able to push on the enemy and give them a hard time. Oh, we have an extra plane in Germany. Perfect. I didn't realize we had an extra fighter laying around. And they have enough distance to get back to Germany. East Western Europe is very valuable to us um, because it's worth six. And if the Allies ever really get a, a beachhead in Western Europe, we're screwed. We need to kill the Russians before that. Um, but we're going to leave it open because we know we can counterattack them this early. And in the non-combat, after doing our attacks, we can move the AA guns around. You can only have one per province. Or at least you can only use one per province. You can store multiples. So we're going to try and move one into Eastern Europe and follow our main army to protect them from air raids. Um, so let's start with the battle up here in Karelia. We missed on all our rolls. They missed on theirs. We hit them on our next roll. We won. Uh, C-Zone 13 over here. I'd like to remain with my sub. We hit them with the sub. The sub shoots in a special stealth round unless there's a destroyer. If it hits, which it does, the enemy does not get to return fire. So we got very lucky with that. C-Zone 15 is next. We have two hit points with a battleship, and we hit on a 4, whereas they hit on a 2. So they damaged our battleship, but it will heal at the end of the round. Because we won the naval combat, we're able to land the troops, which we had sent before. And now we'll do Anglo-Egypt. They killed one of my guys. We killed one of theirs. Why are we only getting one hit? Are you serious? I wish I could see my results. It, it rolls through it very fast. Like, they killed... We had, <laughs> we had a dominant force of tanks and planes and stuff, and they still almost stopped us from taking Anglo-Egypt. Um... So now that all the combats are done, I can move the AA guns around. I don't want one in Western Europe, so if they do land there, I won't protect them in the future turn. And the planes need to move. So we're going to get our planes as close to or into Eastern Europe. These planes are going to land in Germany. This bomber can only get to Libya, and these planes can also only get to Libya. So we have this whole extra army here. We have a tank here. After the Germans is the British. What they're usually into doing is taking Norway and fighting us in the north. And then they have a whole army in India, and they might try and stop us from taking Africa from them. And then, in general, because I didn't say this out loud, our strategy is to beat the Russians, because by breaking the Russians back, we'll genuinely win the game. We win it by conquering a number of places with stars, but realistically, you just need to beat your opponents to the point where they're dead. <laughs> So, all this is done. The very last phase of the ga game is you deploy your troops. We have a factory here, so we can deploy up to 10 things, and we could also, had we chosen to, deploy it up to 6 things in Southern Europe, because it had a factory, and the number is 6. We collect money based on the territories we own at the end of our turn, and now the British are deciding what they want to do to beat us. And they're coming into Western Europe. Can't add event, not a step, must be step at event. Don't know what that means. Okay. So, please leave me alone for a second. So, they, surprisingly, if you ask me, didn't go for Norway. Instead, they went for Western Europe to drop a couple of units into it. Which is fine, because they've left this friggin... What did they even buy? Control H. They bought a bomber, a bunch of dudes, and a tank. 
So the UK is now going to have an army, but they have no destroyer. So the Germans are going to be able to blow up their transports and just be a major nuisance, really. And anything in Western Europe, we can send infantry and tanks at. So anyways, now we're under the Japanese turn. The enemy is trying to hold China. They've blown up one of our transports that we start the game with to put the plane there. And then they ran away with this British fleet, as you can see down here. Um, I don't mind chasing it, but because of there's the extra stuff in China, we kind of have to go for that. And they also abandoned India, so we want that too. How do we get all of it? Well, first off, you need to know, as Japan, we need an extra transport. We need a destroyer for all these submarines lousing about. We need an extra transport because we lost one. I usually get one anyway. And then we need a factory because we need to get things onto the mainland ASAP. Also, there's this setup here, which is basically Pearl Harbor. And we are much obliged to, to go in and do this Pearl Harbor thing. Um, and I think you need the extra plane there, if not an extra bomber as well. So with this, they're only defending with a 2 and a 4, because they'll probably submerge their submarine, and I can't force it to stay in the fight because I don't have a destroyer. Whereas we have a 4, a 1, a 2, a 3, and two more 3s. So I feel like this should win. This transport we can hide in here and unload some things into Manchuria. And then I think with every dude here, we need to hit you very hard. Um, the thing is that you can also send... An extra, like what I really want is to take India. Like I really would like a turn one India, and then I move my battleship and aircraft carrier here so that they're in range of stuff in the future. They can't get to Pearl Harbor or anything, so just having them nearby is is fine. Um, I'd love to go for Buryatia, but to land troops there instead of Manchuria. I would have to leave my ship in C-Zone 60, which the submarine could sneak into and kill. So, this here is a weird fight. He's rolling on a 2, I have a 3, a 1, and a 1. And the plane cannot conquer the territory. So, we shall see. But I feel like this should be okay. 5 1s, a 4, and 3 3s against 2 4s and 2 2s. They're not great. But it's what we're going to do. So let's see how we do. Battle in China. Yeah, let's do the big one first. Oh, we did a huge swing in the first round. And they killed two of our guys, but it was not enough. I don't like that it goes by so quick. And then India. We got him in the first round and he missed. So we're in. And then Pearl Harbor. I'm going to remain with my submarine. They floated down and then they died. Japanese non-combat move. Again, all of the planes need to leave. Gonna land. Some of the planes can get onto this aircraft carrier. Which I think is fine. If I wanted them in Buryatia next turn, I could always go 59, 60... Buryatia and land in Manchuria. They have four total movement, so that would be a legal move. So I can use them anywhere as I want them if they're on this fleet, but they have more flexibility for taking islands or something. Okay. I think that's good. I think that we're happy. The reason I landed so much stuff in French Indochina is because we bought a factory earlier, which I'm going to build there. So in the future, we'll be able to deploy troops directly on the continent. And then in this little sea zone, I will deploy another transport. Which I think is good. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it is good. All right, I'm going to hit done. And now the Americans are going to go. 
And what are they going to do? They're going to fly around with all their boats. Because boats fly. They don't fly, don't worry. He's bringing them all to Panama. A huge American army in Panama. And now the Russians are going to go. Which happened at the very start of the video, but we're seeing it again now. They did a good advance, and now they moved in to counter us in India with all these things. So anyways, that's it for the first year. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, it's actually the first year and then the Russian turn extra, but I think this is a good place to cut it since I don't know how to stop the ally or the, uh, the computer from continuing to play. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions about what's going on here, I had an earlier series where I played as the allies where I kind of spent more time explaining the specifics. Again, I should have said this at the start of the video, but alas. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed, and we're going to see if we can crush the allies quickly, or maybe I have already mismanaged this war and we're on a downward spiral. Cheers.